What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about my vehicle setup and how I deploy my platforms rapidly. As discussed in the last video when we were talking about appendix carry while traveling, for long travels I carry here on a magnet. It's very accessible for rapid deployment and we talk about the pros and cons as well. So if you want to learn more about that, check that video out. Let's go to the back seat. Before we go any further, the links to the websites of the companies are going to be in the description okay so this one is called the gear skid by weaponsgear.com i met rob a couple years ago he's a former marine i'd made a comment on instagram looking for a setup like this we had rented a van since we have such a large family we were going to travel to florida for vacation he shows up the morning before um, he installed everything went over it didn't ask for anything in return no reviews great company check them out they have a lot of good gear online different setups and very durable so this is made out of some high-tech aluminum i'm going to call this the trunk runs up and down it attaches to the headrest and through some straps okay now with that being said you can upgrade and get the brackets that'll actually bolt under the bolts of the um seat rails for more security okay <clears throat> we have the branches there's multiple types of branches on this side you can see we've got slots running vertical and horizontally for the molly setups on these other brackets they actually have holes that are threaded for holsters okay and they can be pulled off and moved up and down and interchanged as well okay now this rubber boot can be removed and replaced by an electronic one that's hooked to your ignition and a lot of law enforcement officers use this setup. So if it's not being used, it'll lock. There's a button that you can press to release it in case of emergencies. Um, overall, this is a really good setup. And this is my primary platform that I use while traveling. It's very consistent. I've never had any issues with it falling out. The only concern that I would say is just having a barrel pointing upwards and this close to somebody's face if somebody's in the back seat. With that being said, we turn it upside down or ensure that nothing's chambered. All right. So like I said, there's always a pro and con to everything. Now what you'll notice on both of these setups, I run very streamlined, very slick. Okay. So a couple things to think about. When we watch companies promote their gear, you're naturally going to see it really decked out okay that serves two purposes the first purpose is just just to show you what the capabilities are of their gear which is awesome and the second it's attract and attract it to the eye it's just something we deal with as being humans here on this crazy earth okay it's very similar to if you follow someone who's a real operator been there and done that you'll see very streamlined operations if you look on Instagram or YouTube at these wannabe operators, you know, it is what it is, you're going to notice that they run just massive amounts of gear, okay? Um, it's an image that's been created over time of what an operator is. We're naturally attracted to pretty things, to bright things, to very symmetrical things, okay? So we think more gear makes us a better operator, but the reality is it doesn't. So just understand the more stuff you put on something like this there's a higher possibility of you making mistakes when you're reaching for your platform i don't care what kind of gear you have how you have it set up um, it just increases the possibilities of error which when we're in a defensive situation the last thing we want to do is be behind the power curve even further because we've put too much crap in our vehicles okay so, like I said, this is a great setup. It's my primary setup I use. Let's look at another one. Okay, so on the back of the driver's seat, I have the Grayman Tactical Rifle Rack. They come in different sizes uh, for different um, places in your vehicle. It's a really good product. As you can see, I kind of have this set up more administratively. All right, I've got a bag it's got some lube gun cleaning kit rag gas mask in case we do gas mask training put a helmet on here i know they have a hanger style attachment for your armor 
And as you can see, there are some rubber boots here to where we can add another weapon platform if we want. If I'm not mistaken, you can actually change this out and have a locking mechanism, okay? So this is a really good product. One thing I am not fond of, and it's just me being nitpicky, is due to the material this is made out of, which seems to be some type of polymer, all right, there's going to be a sag here in the center, okay? Now, I thought about taking an extra strap, tying it to here, wrapping it around the center of the seat, but every seat has curvature in it, which means the strap is going to run straight across. It's going to be sticking out, um, and it's going to look like a sore thumb, and it's more than likely not going to be comfortable. With that being said, depending on what style seat you have, maybe you have a hard seat that's more of a bucket style, and you can hook to it or maybe drill some holes in it if you're putting it on a Humvee or a Jeep or something like that. You just have to look at your setup and just go from there, okay? But with that being said, this does not mean that material is going to give way and end up breaking or get worse. It's just the nature of gravity at some level, okay? One of the things I do like about it is, let's say I get out of my vehicle, and I'm not going to be around my vehicle, I can place this little cover over it and it's going to help conceal what's under here, okay? If I want to use it, get back from lunch or whatever the case may be. You roll it up and we're ready to rock and roll. So I just got this, like I said, I'm just working, started working with it. Um, it's a great product. I don't see any issues with it. Good company. Definitely, um, I like their customer service. I like the way they think, how they communicate. So I definitely support this company as well as Weapons Gear. So now let's go to the back and I'll show you what I carry back there. While I'm traveling, there's a couple pieces of gear that I always have with me. I have a set of armor, PE plates, seven loaded out AR magazines, a battle belt, it's got a holster, a pistol, tourniquet, med pouch or a blowout kit, two AR magazines and two pistol magazines. All right. I also carry a fairly extensive medical bag. All right. No matter if we're talking about carrying gear on the body, home defense, vehicle defense, it's actually an endless topic. We're never gonna to come to a common ground on what we should carry or the placement of the gear. What's important is that you can deploy your weapon rapidly as well as don your gear rapidly, okay? From there, we're just trying to fine tune that movement and the gear to make it more efficient, okay? So I know that I can deploy that platform, get back here, don this gear in less than 20 seconds on a bad day, okay? So the reason why that's important is it gives me a baseline of how I need to react to certain situations. So I'll give you an example. Let's say by chance I happen to roll up on an active shooter situation. There's only, for me and my life, there's only two responses that's gonna happen. I'm either gonna deploy that platform, drive forward, or I'm gonna deploy that platform, don this gear, and then I'm gonna drive forward. So what I'm doing is assessing the environment while all of this is happening. How many gunshots do I hear? Do I hear multiple shooters? Do I hear people screaming? How much time in between the shots, okay? So now we look at pros and cons. If I take that platform and drive forward to save more life, right? Because if they're firing, they're gonna be, I'm gonna lose 15 to 20 seconds, which means people are dying, okay? But with that being said, I lose my protection and I lose my extra ammunition. Right? If I deploy the platform, come back here and dawn, it gives me more protection. I've got the ammo, but there's a higher chance that lives are being lost. So for me personally, I am willing to risk my life to ensure that I save life with an understanding there's a severe risk here. Now you have to look at your life and your capabilities. So I'm gonna humbly say this, I didn't do everything that I've done in my life. I don't do everything that I do in my life. And I don't take it as serious as I do in my life to be killed by a Yahoo or two who probably came from their mommy's basement and is upset with the world and just wants to hurt people. So I know a lot of people, they feel that they have the protector mindset, excuse me, and the protector heart 
but it doesn't translate over into action. What I mean is you're severely out of shape, you're physically out of shape, you're mentally out of shape, um, you can't operate the weapon platforms like you should, okay? So there's a higher chance of you not surviving in a situation like that. So donning your armor is probably going to be a good idea for you if, if you have something like this, okay? Even with armor overseas, guys lose their life, all right? Due to the rise of the muzzle, it starts here and goes right up into the neck and face, so there's always a possibility. I don't want to go home knowing that I was more concerned about protecting myself than I was saving someone's life, okay? So that's just my personal preference, what I think and how I live, and you just gotta make the best decision on um, what's good for your life, okay? So one thing that I really enjoy that I've seen in the last couple years is a drastic increase in firearms training and medical training. It's something that we really need. Um, the way the world is going is crazy. It's just gonna get worse, unfortunately. And we need more trained people, Americans, you know, so for when the crap hits the fan. It's just, it's not if, it's just when, all right? One of the biggest questions I get asked is, what do you run in your blowout kits? What do you run in your med bag? And I'll go over some things, but what is important is, can you use the equipment that you have on you effectively without causing further injury? I can't tell you how many people purchase $80 blowout kits and because of the price, they don't wanna open it up and go through it or use anything, okay? I understand that. <clears throat> I'm a firm believer of what the Bible says, faith without works is dead, okay? When we believe something truly, there should be a physical action that backs it up. So when you buy a med kit, you need to break it out, open it up, learn how to use it, and just invest, invest in another kit or the pieces that you've used to learn how to use, okay? Super important. Um, here's what I'll tell you. Once again, humbly, I've, outside of the military, I've been trained by certified nurses, PAs, and doctors for the last 15 to 17 years on my own time. So naturally, I'm more capable of using higher level medical equipment than the average person. So it reflects here by having that equipment. I don't have anything that I can't use. Now there are some things under um, licensed professionals that I do know how to use, that I've been taught, but I can't carry it because you have to carry a medical license, all right? So it's absolutely irrelevant if I can use it or not in these situations, okay? So another reason why I carry such a large bag and I travel so much by vehicle, if I happen to run upon a vehicle accident, I have access to some equipment that could potentially help save some lives, all right? So hopefully that helps you make a better decision on some of the equipment you're gonna carry with you. I can't tell you right or wrong. All I can do is look at my life and figure out what I possibly need and run with it, all right? So let's uh, see how fast I can deploy that platform on that rack. 